<laughs> hey kids, it's time for another exciting episode of KW Judas! <laughs> fun clapping for yourself it really is yes <laughs> i quite enjoy it thank you <laughs> uh, i don't know how else to just like throw that out there besides well throwing it right out there yep <laughs> heather berry here on kw judas free radio provo Yay. thank you all for joining us i know thank you so much for having me i'm super excited yeah you're lucky that the weather didn't suck almost every other time we've done this our last several guests have had to brave treacherous circumstances to make it here. I know, and I really have a rough time during the winter, so I'm really glad for that. You know, to be honest, the fact that we're like already more than halfway through November, it's been pretty nice. I know. I was just fishing yesterday, and uh, yeah, it, the weather was okay. The pond was frozen. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm, but- <laughs> I'm getting ready to go do some snowboarding, so I am looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to... To this season of KW Judas finally yeah. winding to its end. I know. I was telling you just earlier, this has been about a 35 episode season, yeah. which is like more than twice what any of my seasons have been so far. Yeah, you've been busy. I have. So, um, I don't know if we're going to keep doing this after this. So, you know, let's let's treasure the moments we have. You should you should consider let's yourself count. lucky to be here on oh, KW I do. Judas tonight. I do. I'm super excited. So, where are you from? Um, well, um, sometimes I know how to answer that question. Sometimes I'm like, I, I forget where <laughs> I'm from now. But I actually grew up in Idaho. 
Uh, I lived in Utah for a while, and then I moved out of country for several years. I lived in uh, Mexico for a little while. I lived in Puerto Rico for four years. I lived in uh, Virginia, and then I lived in El Salvador for a few years, and then back to Utah. So were you moving around with your family, or what caused you to move around so much? Yeah, so my ex-husband, it was with his job, so we moved around kind of with his job, and that gave us the opportunity to go for it if we wanted to, and we decided that we really wanted to kind of have that adventure and, and experience different culture, different languages, different places, um, places we'd never been before, and we had three kids uh, as well, and so took those guys with us, and threw them in bilingual schools and oh for a second <laughs> we just took them with us to mexico and threw them <laughs> threw them somewhere in bilingual school of course in bilingual of schools, course yes we did bring Where them else back would so. you throw them in i know mexico, you know? Yeah. i know so that it was really fun um it was a really cool experience my kids actually all loved it as well and and uh, we really learned a lot from it so it was it was great did you guys already speak spanish um no so um Aha. my ex he <laughs> did but i didn't speak any spanish like not a word in fact so you had to go to bilingual school with your kids <laughs> i should have they're so <laughs> much better than i am right now but i now, only charge you a little extra i but know i know and as adults I think it's, worth it's it. harder you know we're probably more of a pain for them but I did when I lived in El Salvador I did like go to a university for like four months to, to at least try and learn it because I'm really social and I really have I like I really like to talk to people and connect and so I'm like okay I need to be able to really learn how to speak Spanish and so that was really helpful for me that's good yep I already got that out of the way man I, I took Spanish immersion for 10 years as a oh, kid oh yeah <laughs> that's good my mom went to a mission in Guatemala, and so when yeah. I first signed up for school, she's like, "Hey, how would you like to know a language that Dad doesn't know and we do?" And uh -huh. I was like, "Sign me up." Yeah, that's good. It's <laughs> we good can that tell you're secrets so behind Dad's back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, now my kids know it better than I do, so yeah. So now they can tell secrets behind your back. I know. I'll get part of it and be like, "Wait a <laughs> second. You got to spend some time on the streets actually learn the real lingo, learn the slang that they don't teach you in school, <laughs> which I, after getting out of school, uh, you know, and working like a construction job and you're talking with like real Hispanic guys talking real Spanish, street Spanish, whatever you want to call it. And you know, like academic Spanish. Mm -hmm. It's different. <laughs> they well, they yeah. make fun of you because you, you speak Spanish too well. Yeah. Yeah. I actually have kind of a funny story about that. When I was living in Puerto Rico, we were down in this um, just more country area and I was just starting to figure out like, okay, I can, I'm kind of learning Spanish. And so we were talking to this guy and I was feeling like I kind of understood. And afterwards I was like, oh, that guy was, seemed really nice. I think I understood a lot of what he said. And, um, <laughs> uh, my ex who was with me was like, um, he swore more than anybody I've ever known. And I didn't know any of those words. And so I'm like, he did like, I had no idea. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, it's because you don't know street Spanish. Exactly. I don't know what what you call it, but uh, it's academic Spanish that doesn't teach all those palabras, mm -hmm. which they should. Sí, claro. They really should. I mean, I know it's not like appropriate or anything, but <laughs> yeah, I you're still, not going to know what all these words mean. I, I still don't know them. <laughs> but it's cool because we're trying to keep it clean on tonight's show, mm. keeping it clean for the kiddies. That's right. You know, I want my my generations and future generations to at least have one episode of KW Judas yes, <laughs> that they can sit the through one. all the way through, which I think we have a couple of those and we're going to have a few more. Speaking of a few more, let's have a few more tunes, yeah, shall let's we? Do it. Let's do it. What do you want to get into next? Um, well, I've sent you a few songs. That first one we listened to was um, my song called Be Strong. And, uh, that was a good one. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I wrote that one actually um, because I'm like a super positive person and I generally I'm very optimistic. I'm generally very happy. Um, and so I wrote that on a day where I was just having such a bad day. And uh. I knew I'm like, you know, what? I know it's going to get better. But today really stinks. <laughs> and so that song was about that. Like, I know it's OK. I know I'll be fine. But today really stinks and I need to make it through today. So that was my 
my song for that. Um, and it's kind of interesting. I write all of my own songs. Um, I write all the music. I, I write all the lyrics. Um, right. yeah, I, I play, I play the, the guitar and the keyboard for them. And it's kind of like, actually, if you, if, <laughs> if I had them in order of when I wrote them, it would be really interesting because you'd have a journey through my life because it just kind of tells the stories of where I've been. And, and, uh, I use my music a lot for that, like, uh, to kind of process my emotions and like all of those kind of things just to just to in a healthy way kind of get those things and experience them and and then be able to learn from them and move on well and also i would imagine to like have something to look back on absolutely you know, yeah when you were going through that you know absolutely and part of the reason i write music too well one is for myself well i mean you know because like i said it's so healing and helpful for me and it really helps me to um, process the things I'm going through but I think there's so many people like we all go through things the good the bad the ugly all of the things right and so I think music's so powerful that way like when you can really connect and think you know what I've been there before like I have felt that before oh my gosh like I didn't know that anyone had had experienced that too or oh my gosh right. that song makes me feel seen or something like that and so I love when music can do that and I hope that that's what my music can can do for others. Oh yeah, well, um, what song do you want to get into next? Um, well, how about we go to um, that one was kind of a, a song about uh, having a bad day. So why don't we go to one about a, a little? This is actually a song home to me is um, a song that I wrote actually. So uh, sorry, I'll give you a teeny little bit of backstory here. Um, oh, we I've, like stories. Oh, good. Yay. <laughs> so I've been divorced for four years now. And um, so this song that I wrote home to me, I actually wrote for my future husband who, you know, I'm still looking for but um, oh you haven't met him yet <laughs> no oh, so how romantic i know <laughs> so anyway this that's like the background for this song i wrote it for my future husband all right future husband out there this one's for you heather berry kw judas free radio program There's a place in my heart I'm saving for you I've been keeping it safe Waiting for you And I've been praying every day That you'll finally find your way You're saving for me Do you dream of our life and what it could be? And are you praying every day that you'll finally find your way home to me?
baby, don't tease me. Don't try to appease me by making me think that I have all the things that you need. And baby, don't change me. And don't try to Uh, that that was someone else in, in the studio audience. We <laughs> yes. got a real enthusiastic studio Huge. audience. Oh, tonight. there's so many. They barely fit in the room. They're going crazy for you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Autographs. That's all I've been doing. We well, got that old fop guy. He just sits in the back and fop 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 fop. <laughs> he gets paid to do that, you know. Good. Uh, yeah. He Fifteen thousand well. peanut shells. <laughs> yeah. So, did you say there was like a story behind this song? Um, yeah, that's one of my songs. I I call it my sassy song. It's a little bit sassy um, if, when you listen to the words. So it's called "Baby Don't," and I actually wrote it because um, I was out one day and I was just in, and I'm like, i I've, I've got, I'm really energetic, like I, you know, some, and when I get really excited, like I get really passionate about what I'm talking to or what I'm talking about, and I like sometimes I start talking kind of loud and. It's not crazy, but, you know, I was just like in one of those moods where I was really happy and I was like, da, 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 you know. Good and contrast for the song before it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I'd say. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And so um, the person I was with was like, oh, hey, shh, like, you know, like, oh, my gosh, no, but people might be looking like, you know, whatever. <laughs> I get that and, all the time. <laughs> and I, for some reason, it like crushed my soul. I was like, <laughs> oh, like I was in such a fun, happy mood. And I was like, oh, and then I'm like wait a second i'm like you're not my friend (laughs) (laughs) but i was like it's totally fine like for me to just be who i am and you know and so i kind of wrote that song about that experience word i dig it i dig it yeah don't let other people rain on your freaking parade (laughs) (laughs) i i mean (laughs) <laughs> well, you know, all these experiences, they if they uh, inspire good songs, then I guess it's for a good reason. <laughs> That's true. Like I said, I <laughs> get that all the time. Mm-hmm. Friends just don't want to take me out anymore. <laughs> so... I hate to be that one. It's like, that song was about me. <laughs> well, we were talking about <laughs> connecting kidding. to songs, right? Maybe that's the one. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps. But at the same time, uh, I never let those sort of things get to me. I just yeah. keep on acting like an idiot and, yeah. uh, you know, don't oh, get embarrassed. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know the meaning of embarrassment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's the key. Don't get embarrassed. That's right. Just write a song about it. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> if someone's like, dude, people might be watching. He's <laughs> just like, then you should probably get away from me. <laughs> As I said, you're not my friend. <laughs> uh, 
Ah, I mean, really. What are friends for besides to keep you in check, though? Actually let you know you're being that way. <laughs> you know, I'm so, I feel like I'm so lucky. I've got some of the most amazing friends, super supportive, like, and even like with the whole like singing adventure and stuff, because it kind of came out of the blue for me. Um, I, I was so surprised and happy maybe not surprised but really grateful with how supportive everyone was um when I kind of decided to start doing music because I've always loved to sing um and I started playing guitar kind of in college I just I bought a guitar from a pawn shop and I bought a guitar chord book and I was like okay I'm just gonna teach myself how to do it I've always wanted to do it so I'm gonna do it and then so I kind like of about what age would you say so that was probably about 19 word yeah, somewhere around there, 19-ish. And then I kind of like just messed around with it here and there throughout the years. And, and then while I was married and then um, once I got divorced, I started really playing a lot. And I, again, I, like I said, I really used it a lot to like manage my emotions and to try and deal with things in healthy ways and, and um, stuff like that. And so then I started writing all of these songs. Like I just started writing songs, writing songs. And um, one day I was like, pondering and contemplating my my life and where I wanted it to go and I wasn't even thinking about the music part of it I was thinking about all of the other things you know um and then I just remember I just was laying in bed and all of a sudden it was like you should do a concert of your music and I was sitting there like wait 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 a sec like wait that's not what I'm talking about here like <laughs> you had I'm, never played a show i'm looking i hadn't i hadn't really? played a show ever but i had like i said i had written all of these songs and so huh. the next morning i get up and i call my friends and i was like okay so crazy crazy thing i'm thinking about doing i'm thinking about doing this concert what do you think and I, you know i thought at first they might be kind of like oh i mean I, yeah sure <laughs> you know like that or something but they were like oh my gosh no you this is great you need to do this this is fantastic like okay we're here to help you how can we do it da, da, da. so um cool. yes it's really been great also to have such great friend support and encouragement like all along the way word mm-hmm. so like this this show you just said yeah I'm going to put together a show or how did you go about getting your first show? (laughs) Okay. So one of my friends owns a a studio in Salt Lake and she was like, okay, like we can use my studio and we'll just, let's do the concert there. And then I just kind of started thinking about, because most of the songs I had written up to that point really had a lot to do with, with being single, right? Because I was newly single. And so I thought, I want this to be for like all of my single friends to come. And maybe this is something where they're like, oh my gosh, okay, I can relate to this. This is, and and I called the event Stronger Together, because I just felt like sometimes when you're in that, that situation and you're like, oh, I'm single. And I like a lot of my friends are married and a lot of all these other things. Like sometimes you get that feeling of like, oh, I just feel a little, I'm not exactly sure where my place is. Like, where's my place? You know, (laughs) maybe someone's felt that before besides just me. But I thought, oh my gosh, we have this group of people who are all in the same situation. Like what a great support network. And so I wanted to like do this kind of um, for all of us together and like, no, we've like, we're stronger together. Like we're here for each other. And so, um, so I actually started thinking there's, okay, there's a lot of people who have a lot of really great talent too. And so I thought, okay, I had a friend that played violin. And so I said, oh my gosh, would you play a couple of songs with me violin? And you'll hear one here, um, coming up in a minute. It's called unnamed and we'll talk about why it's called unnamed in a minute but but anyways um so she came and played a couple of songs with me and then I thought oh I know somebody who loves to sing I'm gonna have them do a couple songs harmony with me and then I was like oh I've got this guy who plays guitar um I'm gonna have him I'll have him come and play uh, one of the songs guitar with me and that was actually really pivotal for me too because he was part of a band excuse me, Um, also, and so uh, their band is Changing Rain, and so he he said, hey, oh, actually, no, it was me. I was playing a song. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I have this bass line in my head that would be so cool for this song, and he's like, oh, how about my band, like, 
plays with you. They're they're amazing. They would love to do it. And I just thought, really, <laughs> you know, this was all on one show. <laughs> one show, yes. <laughs> wow. And so I I was like, okay, but I felt a little intimidated because I'd never played with a band before ever. And so it's pretty fun, isn't it? It is so fun. Oh my <laughs> gosh, yeah, it gets in your blood, and then you're right. like, oh my gosh, this is so much fun. And so I went over there, and it was great. They were super supportive, and they're like, oh my gosh, we love your song, and we're so happy to help. And then because of them, because so because this whole event, because you know, of, and then meeting them, they were recording some of their songs at a studio, um, Aggressive Audio Studio, which uh, is amazing. And they're like, come, come record here and, you know, you can record your songs, which is something that I really wanted to do. But again, I think I was like, you know, should I record my songs? And I'm like, yes. Yeah, why not? Exactly. And then I, so then it snowballed into that. And now, like, it's been amazing because of that one moment, you know, of like, uh -huh. you should do a little concert. All of this has happened, and it's been just such an amazing ride. Like, I can't even explain it. So, like, how long ago would you say this event was? Um, it was probably, um, it's going to be rough, but around three years ago. Oh, word. Yeah. So, would you even be able to give an estimate between, between like, when you very first picked up the guitar mm -hmm. and when you finally decided to do this show? I mean, you said you were around, like, 19 when yeah. you first started writing. Yeah, yeah. So Obviously, was, you went through a lot yeah. between then and there. Yeah. It was it was 20 years, for sure. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's yeah. Uh, quite, uh, it, it's remarkable, yeah. you know, uh, to... I think anybody out there listening that might, I don't know, sort of be in the same position. Yeah. Because, like, a lot of the musicians that we have on here, oh, I don't know, they've been playing since they were a kid and they've yeah. always been at it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And ever mm -hmm. since they first started writing or yeah. playing music, uh, of course, playing shows was right up there yeah. with your priorities. Because yeah. you're like, I, I want to be a musician. I want to play shows. I want to get big. I want to yeah. make money. Or I just want to do it for the passion, yeah. for you know, yeah. um, for the heart and the soul of it. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, to go a whole twenty years, just never even like performing, even a, mm -mm. a coffee shop, nothing, or an and open just mic. and just kind of like for fun, sort of playing here and there, nothing even at all. Yeah, and then it really started um, right then, and that's when I started writing so much. And I don't know if you know this, but I um, this has like always been inspiring to me. Is um, you know the actor Morgan Freeman? I think we all yes. are a little familiar <laughs> with the man. Okay, so do you know that he did not start acting until way, way later in his life? And I wish I knew the exact age, but I think he was in his sixties. Um, really? Yeah, and so. It's so inspiring to me because he like had this whole other life that didn't have anything really to do with acting, at least not like in in a major, you know, a Hollywood kind of way. And then he just decided at that point, like, OK, I really want to do acting. And he just did it. And he's like done all these great things like with that gift and that talent. And so I've always kind of held on to that. I'm like, OK, that's so cool. Like, you know, he does that at that age. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I can when I'm 40, I can just be like, oh okay, I'm going to start doing this music because I love it and I really want to do something with it. You know, I've been thinking about getting into acting, but I've been thinking also it's a little too late. <laughs> Never too late. Your words inspire there me. There you go. There I'm going to, you know what? I quit. I'm not doing KW Judas anymore. I'm going to go be an actor. Yeah. I'm going to go be Morgan Freeman. That's right. Yep. <laughs> All right, the show's over. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> okay, we'll finish the show. All right, in 20 minutes, you can become an actor. <laughs> <laughs> I obviously wasn't very good. You didn't believe me. Not even an, oh. <laughs> no, I believe. 20, I'm like, 20 minutes, done. Go do it. Okay, what song do you want to get into next? <laughs> I got places to be and movies to be in. I know, that's right. And I don't want to hold you back. <laughs> I got to get to Hollywood. That. That's right. Um, so, okay, well, we can do actually, we ta I talked a little about the song Unnamed. So, why don't we do that one? And yeah, it's, yeah. It's actually funny because um, every time I say it's called Unnamed, the, everyone says, oh, it doesn't have a name. And I say, well, it does have a name. It's called Unnamed. <laughs> uh, just because in the song, it's kind of. Uh, about feeling in that place where you're not exactly sure where you are. And so you do feel kind of unnamed, you know. And so anyways, that's why I I named it unnamed. <laughs> right. So, I get you. 
Yeah. Unnamed here on KW Judas Free Radio Provo. Thank you all for bearing witness tonight. A fading memory, something we used to be And when you think of me Does the very air you breathe Take your breath away, make you want to stay
for you How I didn't know I could feel the way I do We have an array of sounds and styles here from Heather Bieri on KW Judas Free Radio Peruvo. That one was awful soft and gentle. <laughs> kind of made me feel all cozy as though by the fire. <laughs> Enjoying a nice cup of wassail. Yeah, that one, <laughs> that one I do really uh, love that song. That one is Just Wanna Love You. And um, that one I actually wrote... When I was just in the middle of a really, really, really terrible, terrible heartbreak. And I wanted to be able to kind of convey um, 
both how I was feeling at that time, but also just the fact that I loved that I got to have the experience to love somebody and that I was so glad that I got to have that experience and I, I wouldn't give that up. So even though it was heartbreaking, um, I really love that I got to have the beautiful experience of, of loving somebody. Yeah. Well, yeah. You got to take, you know, the good with the bad, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I have definitely had some relationships that did not end well. Mm-hmm. And well, at least they introduced me to some good music. <laughs> well, I'm not going to not listen to that music just because I wound up not liking that person anymore. So. Yeah, yeah, and I always think it's nice when you can, after something like that, you can figure out, okay, I really learned a lot. I know more about myself, and you can be grateful for those kind of experiences that you have. So I kind of love that, that music allows you to do that as well. Yeah, it, it sure does. Yeah. Uh, we got about 20 more minutes. Okay, We're at great. the top of the hour. I always say that every time I check what time it is. We're at the top of the hour. <laughs> I don't <laughs> no. even know what hour, but we're at the top. <laughs> we're at the top of whatever hour it is right now. Yes. And that gives us time for a Derp and Schley commercial, which Wonderful. we're going to get into. Okay. And then we're going to get into a, a couple more songs here. Um Anything you want to share with the children before we get into the cartoon? No, other than I'm just, I'm so excited to be here. I love the opportunity to be able to kind of share my music and my journey and hopefully that it resonates with somebody and that maybe um, by hearing some of the things that I have had to experience and that I've written music about that someone can feel something that's helpful to them through some of that. So I appreciate the opportunity to, to, to have that platform to do so. So, have you played any more shows since this first one that you did? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've done quite a few since then, So, um, which has been great. And I did a couple just back in September, and now I've really been concentrating on recording, trying to get my songs recorded. So, I've got one, which we'll hear at the very end, which is... Um, it's just finished, but it actually hasn't been released yet. So that's kind of cool that everyone here will get to listen to one of my songs before it's released. Previously unreleased that's stuff. That's right. Please. That's right. So, and I've got um, three more that are like on tap that are really close as well. So I've got four new songs um, just that are going to be able to be released really soon, which I'm super excited about. Where do people go about finding the music? So you can go to, I have a my website, uh, bearymusic.com. Um, and then I also have, I'm on I'm on Instagram, uh, Bieri Music also. I've got a YouTube channel, Bieri Music. Um, you know, if you hashtag Heather Bieri, you'll find some stuff there as well. So, and then Spotify, I'm on Spotify, um, Amazon Music, iTunes, and if you just look up for the um, artist Heather Bieri, and that's B-I-E-R-I, so Heather Bieri, um, you can find me on pretty much most of the music platforms as well. Well, all right, kitties, you know where to find it, Heather Bieri, on pretty much all your major platforms. Uh, we're going to get into the Derp and Schlee and some more music. Thank you all for joining us. KW Judas Free Radio Provo.
I am sorry, sir, but the results are in, and I have terrible news. Oh, give it to me straight, Professor Vardpeef! What's wrong with my boy? I am afraid your son is a uh, Durpenschledek. He has a uh, Durpenschledes. Nah, dog! That Durpenschledes! Anything but Durpenschledes! Worst case I've ever seen. What, 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 what can we do, Dr. Bob Beef? Well, I don't like to recommend it, but I would try Derpacil. Comes highly recommended. Derpacil it is! Side effects may include small soft drink, Coke products only, or apple juice, side choice of fries or tater tots, small fruit salad, yogurt cup, kitty cone, and a free toy. If you are pregnant or know someone who is pregnant, you might want to make it a double. Please consult the manager before ordering to see if Derpacil is right for you and to ask for a secret side of Derpin sauce. Brought to you by Derpin Lee and remember to have a Derpin day. Oh, we'll just have to let him out of the freeze thing. Uh, it will take care of that too. Grandpa. Brought to you by Derp and Schlee. And remember, if it doesn't say Derp, it's not Derp and Schlee. Oh, that was a word from our sponsor, Derp and Schlee. Whatever are those guys going to come up with next? I don't know. I never do. I can't even pronounce their name, so. Derp and Schlee. <laughs> if you say it over and over and over again, you finally go crazy. Yeah, it just becomes more nonsensical the more you say it. <laughs> you legit lose your crackers. That's why I'm such a weirdo. I just can't stop saying it. Derp and Schlee, Derp and Schlee. I lose sleep over it all night. Yeah. Just wake up in the middle in a cold sweat. Derp and Schlee! <laughs> And then I go back to sleep. Beautiful. <laughs> yep. It is a good thing that we now have a medication for that. <laughs> 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 there should be, at least here in this state. We're like the most over-medicated state there is, I heard. So, I mean, we should have something like that. Yeah, the Derp and Schlee medication. <laughs> right. For those of you who wake up in the middle of the night screaming, Derp and Schlee, Derp and Schlee, like some poor traumatized Derp and child. It's all right, folks. We got you covered. We got Derp and Schlee. <laughs> All right, so you promised us a previously unreleased track. Yes, yes. So. It is coming up right here. Yeah, this one is called I Don't Want to Say Goodbye. So it is done, but not yet released. It is in the process of being released. So this is the first time that it will be played on any platform uh, whatsoever. So it's super exciting. We are all very privileged. 
yeah. and honored to, uh, at least if you're listening to this show when it first comes out. If you're listening to it a rerun, then you missed out. Yeah, and, and, and then you can just go find already. it on you know Spotify or Amazon or iTunes or any of those. You can still, yeah. In fact, it might be better if you listen to this later because by now you can go out and find it on all those platforms. That's true. Which if you're listening to this right now, which I guess no matter when you're listening to it, it is still right now. <laughs> so hopefully, <laughs> I know that's the crazy thing about this show is it's like the closest thing you'll get to like literally time travel. Yeah. Yeah, I feel it. I can feel it. I feel like I'm in a different space and time right now. We kind of are, though, because <laughs> we're we're in this space right now, but we're mm-hmm. also in whatever space whoever's listening to this is in at that time. This is so deep. It is. I'm glad that we ended on such a, a deep and I spiritual know. note. <laughs> I know, right? Because, yeah. you know, I was about to say, I don't want to say goodbye either, but alas, <laughs> kids, it is time. And it's it time, is time to say goodbye. And we have to. So, farewell, good night unto you all, and have a pleasant tomorrow. Thank you for being with us, Heather. Hey, thanks so much. It's been a pleasure. I don't want to say Wanna stay right by your side Wanna be the one you run to Wanna feel your hand in mine No, I don't want to say Say goodbye
like to join you. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> you need the medication. Like <laughs> <laughs> you need the medication. Oh, I screwed up the outro. <laughs> we, I need my pills. We'd like to thank you for joining us in another exciting and exclusive episode of KW Judith on Free Radio Provo. We now turn you back to our regular Free Radio program. 